We love to say this, from small beginnings come great things. It was so nice to have the hospital here in Spokane. We cover all of the different services that are necessary and need to be available for children at a children's hospital. KXLY 4HD presents Spotlight on Health, Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. Brought to you by Providence Healthcare. Hi, I'm KXLY 4's Nadine Woodward. Welcome to this first in a series of special programs that KXLY, in partnership with Providence Healthcare, is excited to bring you as we spotlight specific aspects of care and services in the Inland Northwest. Tonight, we showcase a very special facility dedicated to meeting the needs of children and their families, Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. With an impressive team of truly dedicated professionals, Children's Hospital offers pediatric care close to home and all under one roof. Many people have no idea what a children's hospital is. They, they don't really realize what services are offered or the comprehensive kind of care, health care, that is delivered to children in a children's hospital. And that's generally because they don't have a reason to seek care unless their child is ill. And Peggy Mandrasena, Executive Director of Children's Hospital, will be the first to tell you, kids need a facility that understands them, and parents need a place of refuge. I think the people of Eastern Washington, as well as Idaho and Montana, which is our service area, really have a very unique jewel here in Spokane, because we do have a huge breadth of pediatric subspecialists, which is what we do here that take care of the kids that really have the highest needs and the most complex needs. We have probably over a hundred different physicians that are trained in the care of children from infancy through adolescence. And of that over a hundred physicians, we probably have over 28 specialties that provide care to children. And they range from cardiac to endocrine to nephrology, oncology, psychiatry. It's not only the number of physicians and subspecialists that's impressive, it's the approach to care that sets Children's Hospital apart. The concept of taking care of a family as a unit when you're providing health care is a fairly unique concept. It's a unique approach. But if you think about it for a minute, it's really the only one that makes sense. We call it family-centered care. So every aspect of every piece of care that we deliver is really engaging and involving the family. Healthcare today, both in adult and pediatrics, is about team, team playing. And that means uh, the whole team of people that includes the parent and the child, but also the physician, the support staff, the nurses. And it's the team effort that gets the job done. Part of that team approach and a unique feature at Children's Hospital is the child life specialist. It's very, very, very soft. It doesn't even hurt. No, it doesn't hurt. Child Life soft. Specialist is a professional who's focused on the emotional and psychosocial needs of kids as in the hospital. And so we're really trying to help kids feel more comfortable while they're here, feel not as fearful, and understand what's going on in terms that they can um, comprehend. Yeah. Alleviating the stress of young patients is an important goal at Children's Hospital, which is evident the moment you walk through the door. The environment of a Children's Hospital is a very unique feature. So in Sacred Heart Children's Hospital, you will see bright colored paints, you will see odd shaped windows, you will see footprints going down the hallway, you will see sky bridges filled with uh, fish and with butterflies. For families, we have attempted to meet all of their needs while they're here. So from having space in their child's room to sleep with their child, to partnering with Ronald McDonald to have a family room here in the Children's Hospital that has access to a washer and a dryer, some of the other amenities that are necessary when you're away from home but you don't often think of. We've made all of those accommodations right here at the Children's Hospital. We recognize that we have one chance to minimize fear, to maximize hopes and to make it a fun environment for a child so that they won't be frightened about what has to occur there. Because kids deserve only the best care available, the mission of Sacred Heart Children's Hospital is clear. Whether it's a physician, a respiratory therapist, a nurse, a child life therapist, all of these professionals come with the one desire to take care of children. Okay, can you touch your nose with your tongue? Oh, you can't! <laughs> the amazing thing is, again, it's all local. 
We have local care, local expertise, and, we, and we've drawn that from all over the United States to be here in one place. Spokane has a unique feature in Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. Here, ready and waiting to help in any way we can if they need us. Another unique service that Children's Hospital offers is the area's only pediatric ER, open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Recently, emergency medicine in itself is a relatively new subspecialty for medicine. And pediatric emergency medicine is even newer as a subspecialty than that and growing very fast. Kids are so different. They're not little adults. And it's nice to be able to come into an area where it's kid-friendly, as much as you can make a hospital. Um, you have pediatric trained uh, physicians and you have pediatric trained nurses. The kiddos stay back here. They come in, they're registered at the front desk in the main ER, and then they're brought back directly here to our own waiting room and to our triage area. So here in our pediatric emergency department, we have the equipment uh, on hand and immediately necessary to deal with pediatric issues, which uh, in a general emergency department, you may be getting more generalized adult equipment that is being fitted for children. We see ages zero, I mean newborns who have just went home up to the age of 15. The preparedness that we have in terms of working with children all the time and understanding that they're not just little adults, that they are different and the medications used to treat them uh, is different and the dosing is different. The PCR is the front door of the children's hospital and we have all the subspecialists that we can imagine. This is where they first come in and then we have all that support system to help these kiddos. Obviously very special people doing very special work. Up next. When a child is diagnosed with cancer, it affects the entire family. We'll meet more amazing people and some of the lives they touch. You may wake up one day feeling lower than low, like your temperature's down to 100 below. You'll need the best doctors and nurses if you're to get strong and a place to get better so you can move on. Better, yes, better is all you should be. And this place is one great big get better machine. Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. World-class healthcare, just for kids. This is a place devoted to one purpose, caring for children, where exceptional pediatric physicians and nurses dedicate their lives to delivering breakthrough treatments for things like cancer and complex heart problems. And where kids can just be kids and families can be families at a time when they need each other most. Sacred Heart Children's Hospital, right here in Spokane. A cancer diagnosis can be one of a parent's worst fears, not just for the parent, but for their child as well. That's why the mission of Children's Hospital is to offer a comfortable, optimistic, and loving environment, as we see in this tour of the oncology unit. When a child is diagnosed with cancer, it affects the entire family, so we try to make our environment as family-friendly as possible. So we've created some space within the, uh, our floor that allow for uh, parents to be here for long periods of time and siblings as well. One of the areas that we, have, that we have available for parents is our Ronald McDonald Day Room. Parents can come here and get a cup of coffee or they can go to the fridge and make themselves a snack. And parents like to spend some time together parent to parent. Mm -hmm. um, and so it gives them kind of a support group and they can spend um, some time away from their children and just talk to one another and share about their experiences. So, and parents, because we spend, they spend so much time here, they get pretty close to each other. So um, they become, uh, we all become family. We have this outdoor terrace and um, so kids can just go outside and get some fresh air. Sometimes they'll just spend a couple hours just sitting out there getting some fresh air or when it snows, they build a snowman and um, we used to sidewalk chalk. Some kids like to play baseball so they'll pick up the balls and get a little bit of activity. Um, it's also great for siblings because siblings can work off a little bit of pent up energy. Um, can you tell us about the flag poles? Yes, um, the flag poles were a donation from the Rippon Foundation. They're uh, um, meant to um, signify when a patient is here, they make their own special individual flag, and then we raise that flag when the patient is inpatient so that um, people from all over the city really, when they're coming in, can see that particular flag. This is our playroom. Uh, this room really comes alive in the afternoon. 
During the first part of the day, the kids are usually in their rooms, the doctors are making rounds and they're making decisions about what's going to happen with their care. But in the afternoon, this, uh, this room definitely lights up and it's also a really good place for um, siblings to gather and to have mindful activities that they can do together. From their mental perspective, it's good for them to get out of their room. We also have uh, patients and family members that like to gather out here and uh, play with the Wii. It's kind of fun to watch them um, compete with each other and get together. A lot of our patients make friends and so they'll often come out here and play with the Wii together as well. So our patient rooms we also try to make family friendly as well. Every room is has a couch, a day bed for one of the family members to stay. All the rooms are sectioned off in three sections. The back end is for a family member to stay and there's plenty of room uh, for the family member to put their clothes and to sleep at night. The bathrooms are very large so that both whomever is staying in the room can shower easily. Every room is equipped with a refrigerator. Every room of course has a TV and a DVD, um, you know, an ability to play more video games. It's, it's something easy that the patients can do while, while they're resting and it keeps them engaged in another activity. Another thing I'd like to show you is the teen lounge. Teenagers have very different needs than the smaller kids. So what do you have in the teen lounge? Well, we've got a, a large screen TV and just very comfortable oh, yeah. couches, some music, there's a couple of guitars and a piano, and puzzles and games. The main thing with teenagers is they just want to gather and be together and just hang. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this, that's what we had in mind when we designed this room was just so teenagers could come and hang out together. So this is your outpatient area? Right. We, ha we do have an outpatient clinic and it's associated with our inpatient unit. Mm -hmm. We do try to keep the kids out of the hospital as much as possible, mm -hmm. but we still do have to see them on a regular basis. So a lot of times if they don't have to have an inpatient stay, we'll bring them through the outpatient clinic and follow their treatment that way. So the outpatient clinic has four uh, infusion rooms. Rooms. And we also have a playroom here. Most of the kids just get their treatment right there in the playroom. And again, we, we make it as family friendly as possible and siblings are welcome to come. Uh, kids do better when, they have their fa when they're surrounded by their family, so we definitely encourage that and let them play as much as possible. Kim, you must be very proud of the oncology unit. I'm very proud of it. And part of the treatment is the team, the team that comes together to treat these kids and their families, but also being able to offer them such nice surroundings and such a nice environment makes a huge impact on their outcomes. Not all superheroes wear capes, but like 11-year-old Nikayla, who was diagnosed with sickle cell anemia as an infant, they approach life with the same bravery and gusto as a superhero. Sickle cell is when you're Blood is not shaped like usual, like other people's. Mine is shaped like a half moon. A little girl with a big personality, 11-year-old Nikayla Taylor is a regular at Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. She visits every couple of weeks for treatments to help her body combat the effects of sickle cell anemia and prevent painful episodes common to the disease. One port hurts when the needle gets in. Feels like something we're in the other one does it. For the medical staff, comforting their young patient is just as important as treating their disease. Her name is Donna and she does my exchange every three weeks. And I like having her. They make sure you're okay. They comfort you if you're hurt or something. Did you tell them about us wearing our crowns? <laughs> Did you tell your dad about that? We went to a several hospitals just because I've been in the military moving around and my daughter, I've been to several different hospitals and this is one of the best. I mean the, uh, the staff here is uh, outstanding. I can't say but good things about them. I like being here. I think it's fun and I like to make the people here laugh. <laughs> the survival rate for children with cancer is 80%. That's an encouraging statistic for any parent whose child has been diagnosed with the disease. And it's because of medical professionals like Dr. Judy Felgenhauer who are dedicated to improving the outcome for children with cancer that make that survival rate possible. It's been a lifelong dream of Dr. Judy Felgenhauer to work with children. And you could say she's taken on one of the most difficult of assignments when it comes to helping young patients, children with cancer. There are days where it's very difficult. And when that happens, sometimes it's just as easy as looking at the family and saying, I'm not going through anything compared to what this family is going through. They're the ones who are really doing a hard job. Dr. Felkenhauer came to Sacred Heart seven years ago to develop the hematology and oncology clinic at Children's Hospital from the ground up. 
We are now at the point where we're starting to focus on our subspecialty clinics and populations that would be our brain tumor patients. They certainly have a lot more long-term follow-up issues and have more needs and we run a specialty clinic where we have neurosurgery and neurology and endocrinology and all those other specialties that many of those patients need. Dr. Felkenhauer says the mission was to build a unit not just focused on the young patient, but the entire family. We're not only interested in how the child's doing when they come in for a visit, but how is our mom and dad doing? How's their marriage? Our social worker will check in, make sure they're taking some time for themselves. Okay, open up. Uh, there is a very talented, dedicated group of pediatricians and pediatric subspecialists that are here in town. Most of us have chosen not to be at a university. We want to still be providing direct care to patients, um, but at the same time have the opportunity to do some teaching to other doctors and nurses as they're coming along, and this is kind of the perfect place to do it. From small beginnings come great things. We think that's the case, and we want to encourage our families to remember that too. Coming up next, we tour Children's Hospital's Neonatal Intensive Care Unit, ushering in a new era of family-centered care for the tiniest of patients. Here, this is the place, one that uniquely exists to serve a clearly defined and purely devoted purpose, caring for children. And while kids, understandably, may prefer to never step through these doors, others have dedicated their entire lives to what happens here. Namely, some of the most exceptional pediatric physicians and nurses anywhere, and specialists capable of delivering breakthrough treatments for things like cancer and complex heart problems. And amidst the protocols and the procedures, you'll find something absolutely remarkable. A place where kids can just be kids and families can be families at a time when they need each other most. Sacred Heart Children's Hospital, world-class healthcare, right here in Spokane. Here at Sacred Heart Children's Hospital, we've seen a tremendous level of care administered to children and their families. And it's offered to the tiniest of patients with the most serious medical conditions. That's when the neonatal intensive care unit takes over. You have a lot to show us today. I do, I'm excited to show it to you. Um, I'm gonna start you off today on our graduate wall. There's 150 leaves on this wall that five years ago when we needed open, we just didn't think we'd ever fill it up. But these are graduates that have spent time with us in the NICU. They often get a photograph when they go home and their moms and dads love to come out and pick a leaf and put them on. Really, this is a wall of success it is. stories. Yes, that's well put. 30% of my admissions are transport, so they come from all over the region, um, oftentimes at night and they fly in, mom or dad has come with baby, they have nowhere to stay, and we have a room that's got a sofa bed, a full bath shower, phone, we just put them to bed and say, just stay here and we'll work on housing tomorrow. In the old unit, there was nowhere for our families or visitors to go when they weren't in the unit with baby. So they built this huge um, family waiting area that's got, again, a telephone, um, coffee, a place to put a frozen dinner, microwave, um, it's theirs to use, bathroom, um, and we really had a lot of people in here with, you know, high census, but it was a huge add-on. So, so, Jean, we're at the entrance now. We are. We are. Every family member that comes in, this is a locked unit, so they have a chance to buzz in, say, I'm here to visit baby. They sign in and go see their baby. This is called the center pod. We had to give them kind of fun names, so we call it Grand Central because we had to call it something. <laughs> but this is a typical two-bedroom. You're welcome to come in. Um, and right now it's set up for twins because um, uh, we're expecting a set sometime. And it, the room is split in half. So you've got this, this is a set up bed for one baby. The bat one is identically set up um, and nurses can go back and forth. A premature baby, all their care is based on their gram weight per day. Every time we have a wet diaper, we have to weigh it. Because oh. you weigh it first to remember what your gram is and you weigh the other one and there you go. It's just its own world of they can't make a move if we don't know about it. This is Kai. Oh. Okay. And why is he an ICU baby? He had respiratory distress, so he was put on a ventilator, and then he went to CPAP, which is continuous positive airway pressure. Mm. 
and he'll be able to go home when, do you think? Shouldn't be too long. Um, there's some things that babies need to do before they get to leave. They have to be able to hold their own temperature, which means that the bed's not going to help them in any way. Mm -hmm. He's doing that perfectly. Um, he needs to be able to take all his food by his mouth, and he also has to be growing. He's so he's so well cute. on the way. He's got several steps accomplished. He's just got a couple more steps to accomplish to get oh, to go home. Just precious. The NIC was just one piece of the journey of a family or a baby um, pregnancy at risk. We have a NICU follow-up clinic that we see kids up to two years of age to make sure they're right on track for development. We get them also connected to services before they leave here and also to the follow-up clinic. But we're just part of that big process of, I think, some really great care. Well, obviously, you're very proud of this facility. I am. Another major area of care here at Children's Hospital is the cardiac unit. Their ability to deliver expert, personalized care to infants, children, and adolescents is simply unsurpassed. When I moved here, my specialty was in fetal echocardiography, so we decided to really develop the fetal echocardiography program here. Pediatric cardiologist Pam Berg is part of an amazing group of physicians dedicated to helping children with heart defects at the earliest stages of life. At 18 weeks is about the earliest we can get a very good look at the fetal heart. You have to remember that whatever uh, heart malformation is occurring in the baby, it's already set by the eighth week. So here we can see um, baby's face. Here's the eye, the nose, lips, chin, um, baby's chest. Right here you can kind of see the heart beating here. We can see the vein bringing in blue blood into what when the baby is born would be blue blood coming into the heart chamber. This is the aorta, which sends blood flow out from the heart to the body. Children's Hospital fosters an atmosphere of teamwork where specialists and surgeons combine efforts to create the best patient care. It's a bicuspid valve. I'm pretty sure it's probably going to need replacement at some date. We work very closely with our pediatric surgical team. We have three excellent congenital heart surgeons here, Drs. Leonard, uh, Seawick, and Worrell. We meet with them very regularly to discuss our cases that we believe will need surgery in the future. They're fantastic. We thought Ben was entirely healthy. He was born uh, no problems and grew up was a normal little kid. What you going to do today? Well, they're going to fix up my heart. Yeah. Yep. Seven-year-old Ben Mack is your typical boy in most aspects, and he's also more than willing to tell you he needs work on his heart valve. They're going to replace it or they're going to fix it. Hey, Grandma. <laughs> <laughs> ben, uh, totally normal young young boy, um, and but his mom had noticed that he didn't quite keep up with his peers. When his when he was out running with his friends outside, is always the last one, and he even would complain that his chest would hurt when he'd really push him because he'd really wanted to keep up just like any boy. We sort of believed it was nothing, and uh, went to see the cardiologist and. They did um, an EKG and then uh, the, uh, the echo cardiogram. And <coughs> after that, Dr. Berg came out and her words to us were, your son has a very serious heart condition. We were able to identify that the aortic valve, the main valve that pumps from the left side of the heart to the body, um, was not formed correctly and was leaking quite a bit. So here is an echocardiogram and um, this is a view, uh, what we call a long axis view, uh, where we're looking up here at the chest. This is that left ventricle that's pumping out the aorta. And all this blood that's blue is going the wrong direction. Um, so this is supposed to go out and be red coming towards my transducer. And, but whenever that valve shuts, it leaks and all of this blue blood is regurgitating back into that left chamber. Ben's condition is serious, but the family-centered approach to his care at Children's Hospital puts his parents' minds at ease. Dr. Berg did a great job of just explaining all the, I mean, this is just before we even knew exactly what would happen today, you know, um, in surgery. Here's all the possible options. Here's what we're looking forward to in the future. All right, so our plan is we're going to try, we're going to look hard at this valve, see if we can figure out a way to get it from leaking a lot to not leaking more than a little. You know, if we, if we have a little bit of leak but, but have it substantially better, then we'll be happy with that. And if not, we'll be replacing the valve, right? Okay. All right. We'll get going, Charlie. Can I go? 
From the surgeon to the anesthesiologist, to the child life specialist, to the nurses, it all comes down to teamwork, and it begins before Ben is ever wheeled into surgery. I love you, Thank you. Say bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to do awesome. We're going to take really good care of him. See you later. Bye, bye. See you soon. All right, here we go, buddy. <laughs> good job. <laughs> The day of surgery, we're as prepared as we can be. Um, in the operating room, we do one last check. We use an echocardiogram from the esophagus, and that gives us beautiful pictures of the heart. Sometimes we're able to find details there that we didn't see before. And actually in Ben, what we realized was that that valve was missing a piece. Dr. Seawick, knowing that information, was able to prepare before he even started surgery um, by taking a piece of pericardium, which is uh, part of the sac that the heart sits in, and use that to patch the aortic valve. For the Max, hearing the best possible news on Ben's surgery is a huge relief. So I don't know if you got any word, but uh, the, the surgery went just fine. Um, really, the valve actually, frankly, looked a lot worse than I thought it was going to. Okay. And I was a, a little concerned about whether we're going to be able to figure out something to do to, to fix it. It was really just a, a gap, a, a bunch of the leaflet was missing. You know, uh -huh. As opposed to having too much leaflet and having it be too floppy, there was just this kind of hole in the leaflet with very thick and like a horseshoe of scar <laughs> tissue. Mm -hmm. So we ended up cutting away some of that and replacing it with a little patch of pericardium, a little bit of the sac that yeah. came around his heart. And uh, it actually looked quite good and on the echo it looks great. I was real happy that uh, that we got it looking as good as it did and he's tolerated the surgery just fine. Good. They're just getting ready to bring him upstairs good. shortly. Good. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you. Right. so much. See, you'll see him up. We're so thrilled. He'd had an excellent result. For Ben, and so many children like him, his surgery was a huge success. Amazingly, just three days later, Ben is recovering and will go home the next day. What would you tell kids now after having your surgery? Well, it's been fun. If you eat a lot and walk a lot, you get to go home faster. How's his prognosis? Will he need surgery? As you know, he may, because as you can imagine, that patch is not going to grow with right, him. Right. So we're just going to have to keep following him, and we're going to take very, very good care of that valve. Any limitations? You know, if his valve functions well, there really aren't any limitations. He can keep up with the other boys. Well, Ben's case is just one of thousands of extraordinary stories that play out every day at Sacred Heart Children's Hospital. Your family may never need to take advantage of the superior programs and services offered here, but if you do, you can rest assured that your child or loved one will be getting the best quality care this region has to offer. I'm Nadine Woodward. Thanks for joining us.